Um, so I will be presenting the key findings from the study on clean energy technology in the Philippines, case of the electric vehicle industry. Um, okay, so next slide, please. So the objective of the study are uh, uh, objectives are to this, uh, examine the electric vehicle or EV industry in the Philippines, uh, the current regulations, challenges faced, and prospects in the industry, and um, to present insights and recommendations based on the findings. Um, for this study, I used the SWOT, or uh, the, which means um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And um, I used this method to bring and process altogether the um, information that I have collected and uh, to determine the challenges and prospects on the top of the industry. Next slide, please. Okay, so if we look at the um, EV sector globally, um, the out outlook is very optimistic. Um, an increasing trend, trend in EV is observed in the global fleet for any type of vehicle uh, from 2010 to 2019. Um, in 2019, electric cars went up to 7.2 million globally, which is a huge increase from 450,000 sales in 2015. And the projection by Bloomberg and EF shows that there will be 26 million electric cars in 2030 and 54 million in 2040. And also, uh, EVs will compose 58% of total vehicle sales in 2040 and 31% of global fleet. Um, electric vehicles or EVs have gained attention as uh, governments aim for clean and low carbon transport. Um, it show, also shows advancement of technology in the automotive sector. Um, and for the Philippines, uh, aspirations are, are similar. We would like to reduce dependence on fossil fuels, which has tendency to have uh, fluctuating prices. We want to minimize um, harmful emissions and waste to protect the environment. And we also want our industry to grow. Okay, so... Um, adoption of EVs is encouraged by countries through uh, granting of incentives, implementation of uh, tighter regulations on emissions. Um, governments have announced uh, specific goals for the industry. So it could be uh, in terms of EV sales or dates for banning um, internal combustion engine sales. So yung the traditional uh, vehicles or both. For the Philippines, the target is that uh, EVs will comprise 21% of sales by 2030 and 50% by 2040. Um, another example would be Singapore, which uh, will phase out the uh, traditional vehicles by 2040. Next slide, please. So, dito naman po tayo sa Pilipinas. Uh, so, here we have uh, data from LTO. Uh, which shows uh, the stock of EV from 2010 to 2019, uh, which totals 11,950. So, siguro pa kung isasama yung unregistered, uh, there will be more uh, numbers. Okay, so majority of e-trikes, majority, sorry, are e-trikes, uh, which is 57%, and uh, e-motorcycles, which is uh, 36%. Next, please. Um, and uh, here a bit of uh, a profile of the industry. Um, so uh, EV uh, players, industry players in the Philippines include 28 vehicle manufacturers. Eight of them have foreign equity, um, 11 parts and components manufacturers, and seven um, important uh, importers, dealers, and traders. Um, so I, I sourced this from a roadmap from EVAP a few years ago. So baka merong update from, uh, from our discussion later. Um, anyway, so we have um, also in terms of models as of March 2019, uh, 15 for each jeepney, 21 for each trike, 11 for electric cars, 61 for uh, motorcycles. And uh, in terms of outlook, uh, in 2019, EVA projected that um, EV sales will reach 200,000 units by 2025. And in the same year, the government targeted 200, 
uh, charging stations uh, uh, in uh, SM and Shell outlets by 2022. And as mentioned previously, the uh, target is 21% uh, of vehicle sales uh, are EV by 2030 and 50% by 2040. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, uh, for this uh, paper, I made or I had a compilation of the uh, industry structure and value chain. Um, this is based on the automotive value chain by the DTI and uh, a couple of studies on uh, EV. Um, so the value chain starts with the uh, design and development and ends with uh, consumers and after sales service. And in between, we have uh, vehicle manufacturing, which involves the parts and component suppliers, so material suppliers, manufacturers. And then there's uh, marketing and sales and um, suppliers of complements, which uh, an example is uh, charging facility. So um, those listed here are uh, parts of the supply chain which we have, we have strong local capacity, especially those in bold letters. Um, the list here is based on a study that was um, commissioned by Mitsubishi Corp. in 2019. So, uh, so in terms of strong local uh, capacity, we have wiring, mechanical components, aluminum components, rubber and plastic components, uh, chassis, uh, system, electrical system, interior system. In terms of vehicles, e trucks and e GPs, and then there's uh, marketing and sales. Uh, next, please. Okay, so uh, pagdating naman po sa mga policy, uh, meron po tayong mga programa, mga batas na sumusuport sa industriya. At um, ang ilan po doon na nandito, uh, uh, listed in, here, uh, in the slide. Um, so I won't go into details. Um, but to summarize, um, they aim for uh, provision of fiscal and uh, non-fiscal support, um, standards for product quality and safety, uh, also um, reg uh, regulatory framework and strategy for the industry. Next, please. Um, okay, here are just some photos of uh, the e-vehicles we have. In, in the country, so may e trike. Uh, what else? I have a picture of uh, e jeepney and then uh, e bike and e motorcycle. Next, please. Okay, so now I'll uh, discuss the findings from the SWOT. So, in terms of uh, strength, um, there is a strong government support in terms of programs, policies, and projects, as uh, shown in the previous slide. Um, the industry has also been very active in advocacy in uh, participating in the government programs and in manufacturing activities. Um, if I may men mention some accomplishments, one is the tricycle replacement program of the DOE, which employed um, uh, deployed to different LGUs, about 3,000 e-trikes that, we, that uh, were produced by uh, BMAC, BEMAC, a local electric tricycle manufacturer. And then there was also the ADB project, which deployed e-trikes to uh, Metro Manila and other key urban areas. And then uh, the partnership between EV firms or uh, and the private sector also shows strength. Um, so, uh, examples are uh, the joint venture in 2015 between uh, Rupali Corporation, a uh, top motorcycle dealer in the Philippines, and Peco Electric Machinery, which is a Taiwanese company that develops and manufactures electric motors. Uh, their uh, partnership, Proteco, aims to produce e trikes and e jeepneys. And then there's also a partnership. Uh, between Toho or Tojo Motors, a uh, local manufacturer with a Changshu High Star Battery Manufacturing Company, uh, which is a Chinese firm, for the local assembly of EV batteries. 
Then there's a partnership uh, between Mitsubishi Corporation uh, and Beralco, which aims to build pre charging stations in for DTI and our offices. And then uh, the country can leverage on its capabilities in auto electronic parts and components um, and also semiconductors manufacturing as well as automotive assembly. The country has been a key manufacturer and exporter of wire harnesses, which is a vital component of uh, electrical systems in vehicles. And uh, we have local EV manufacturers. So I mentioned the um, B back or B, I'm not sure how to pronounce B A M A C, PHUV, Pinoy Aho Corporation, Star, Toho, Toyota Motors, which um, CC produce e trikes and e jeepneys. Uh, e so, uh, to some extent, there's uh, capability in um, EV product development and manufacture which can be exploited and updated. And then there's a consumer. Uh, Perception and enthusiasm, which is also one strength. Uh, for the Philippines, uh, this is based on uh, in a market research by Nissan and uh, Frost and Sullivan in 2018, it was revealed that 46% of Filipino consumers are open to buying EV as their next vehicle. The next uh, slide, please. Then, uh, witnesses. So first is a uh, low level of technology utilization in manufacturing and infrastructure. Um, I'm basing this on the SMART uh, Manufacturing Maturity Index based on the 2019 Trade Survey by the DPI, and uh, which uh, suggested that 79% of respondents are in levels from very low to low technology utilization. Uh, but to be fair, Dina Mantona, we our, our um, innovation performance is improving. We have a better ranking in the Global Innovation Index in 2020 and an increase in uh, our index expenditure to GDP ratios. It's 0.35%, uh, so from uh, 0.12 or 0.14 in previous years. Um, okay, so in the uh, Global Innovation Index, it was noted that we performed better in innovation outputs than innovation inputs. Um, but uh, we uh, performed below average in institutions, human capital, research, infra, uh, market sophistication, and creative inputs. Um, I think that the government recognizes this and uh, is coming up with strategies for improvement. And then uh, next is uh, low number of charging stations. Um, well, yung, yung uh, data ko po is from 2018, uh, which is 19 charging stations. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, well, meron po naman siguro mga additionals. Um, okay, so there's no standard prescribed ratio of uh, EV to charging point. But uh, experts and researchers say that it would range from 8 to 33 vehicles per charging station. So if um, I were to look at the 2018 figures, I think uh, we are quite far from those numbers. Um, even if we consider, for example, that most uh, vehicles would be charged at home. And then there's uh, consumer concerns. Um, the first and Sullivan survey revealed that pinch anxiety uh, which refers to how far the vehicle will go and safety are top concerns of potential EV buyers in ASEAN. Though um, well, with developments in the sector, uh, mini compact cars could uh, run for 100 kilometers. Um, the mid-size or SUVs could uh, run for uh, 200 or 300 kilometers, uh, an inch hike. Uh, 35 to 50 kilometers, and uh, there are models that can run up to 100 kilometers. Next, please. Uh, the opportunities. Um, the positive outlook, uh, global outlook, and the production of EVs 
and uh, the overall global trends in electrification in the transport sector provide high prospects for the EV industry. Um, so for the country, it can perhaps take part in the EV value chain in Asia, which would be expected to be large as China has been leading the um, EV production sale and sales, uh, the construction of charging stations as well. And uh, other countries in the region, such as Japan and South Korea, are also expected to have large production in electric cars. And then there's uh, also investment prospects for battery production in the country, uh, being one of the top suppliers of nickel ore, which is a uh, key raw material in EV batteries. Um, this has been identified, uh, recognized by EVAP and the nickel uh, mining industry which has uh, started talks with um, the China Battery Association to explore the manufacture of lithium uh, lithium ion batteries in the Philippines. And uh, related to batteries, uh, there are also projections, projections that the uh, technological advancements and presence of um, supportive policies to EV could address concerns about battery prices. And then um, uh, cross-border partnerships uh, between firms or industry associations uh, serve as channels for transfer of technology. Um, we've had um, examples of partnership between Filipino and foreign firms. Um, the EVAP also led the creation of the ASEAN uh, Federation of Electric Vehicles Associations, which uh, is regarded as a venue for sharing of uh, best industry practices, R&D initiatives, as well as networking uh, that have so far resulted in uh, joint venture projects. Then, uh, I, next slide, slide, please. Okay, so um, uh, threats. Uh, so one is the high cost of um, EVs. Um, so the, the projected cost multiplier based on the uh, Mitsubishi study is for the full electric vehicles, it is 1.7 to 2.3 twice as much as the traditional vehicle or conventional vehicle. And then the hybrid, for hybrid 1.4 to uh, almost two, twice the price of conventional vehicles. Um, then, as for the battery, um, it is more than 50% of EV cost. Um, uh, vehicle and battery producers are observed to be sensitive to raw materials and so uh, could be affecting uh, the pricing of EVs. Um, so, uh, if we look at energy cost, um, in, again, the study by uh, um, it's a BC. Um, if you look at the uh, life cycle of an EV, it's, it is projected that uh, the EV is competitive as the uh, uh, energy cost is lower compared to fuel power vehicles. Then given the projected um, growth in EV production, there are also concerns about the um, adequacy of charging infrastructure, but um, with you know technology and uh, supportive policies, it is anticipated that concerns about the infrastructure could be addressed. And uh, so now, uh, utilities, um, oil and gas companies, and automakers globally have been um, actively installing uh, charging facilities. And as of 2019, there are um, around 850,000 charging points which is a um, 60% increase from 2018. Um, although we have these challenges, our country is somehow in an uh, advantageous position, I and mean, given the uh, presence of EV technology in the region, uh, China is, uh, like I said, leading in um, EV sales and charging infrastructure. And then we have Japan, Singapore, and South Korea that are among the top uh, countries in charger intensity. And then uh, last for this slide, what I think 
uh, the country must prepare for is the increased competition in inward, um, inward investments in the region. Countries should be keen on hosting investments in the EV technology and the value chain. Uh, for instance, um, countries in ASEAN that have abundant natural resources used as raw materials in battery manufacturing, and also those that already have um, a close economic partnership with top producers uh, in Asia. Okay, so, next please. So, this is my last line. Now. Okay, so to conclude, uh, there is potential for growth, um, given the support from government and active engagement of the industry and private state, uh, stakeholders and uh, also the manufacturing capabilities. Uh, but the country is faced with uh, relatively uh, technology utilization and general concerns about the EV infrastructure, um, as well as strong competition for investment. And uh, based on these findings, um, the following are recommended. First is uh, to fast track the, or consider as priority the deliberations on the EV deal. Um, this uh, uh, an EV law will set the national policy and overall framework for regulations uh, that's related to uh, standards, uh, incentives, infrastructure, and others. Um, it can also signal investors that the industry is a priority area for industry development. The industry is uh, fast moving, and um, in order to be to not be left behind including uh, the bill and the priorities would be crucial. And the next, um, I think the, the DTI is already doing this best, but to just uh, reiterate the, I think the importance uh, of uh, developing market and feasibility studies for uh, manufacturing prospects. So this would include the battery manufacturing roadmap, the charging infrastructure plan, um, that would all link to the comprehensive um, EV roadmap. And if also the um, country could explore a uh, possibility of focusing on a specific type of uh, EV vehicle, so maybe a passenger car or um, a bus or truck or e bike or others. And then we can make our country a manufacturing hub for that product. Um, then uh, another uh, recommendation would be an uh, establish an EV strategy committee or council, um, which is composed of representatives from government and the private sector, um, uh, which uh, would lead the defi definition of goals and plans for the industry. Um, ang nakita ko po kasi doon sa EV bill is that um, uh, there will be establishment of dedicated offices, but in the different government agencies that are uh, part of the the bill. Uh, for example, DOE, DOTR, and DDI uh, for the implementation of the law, EV law. So I think kapag tiwahiwalay, there could be um, challenges in terms of coordination. And then this uh, council could be connected to a network. So it's not only um, government and EV manufacturers, suppliers and distributors, but also um, other entities. Uh, for example, NIDA, which is uh, an important partner for uh, public awareness on EVs and other um, partners um, could be power companies, uh, financial institutions, and non government as, as uh, organization. And then um, also to consider fiscal incentives to stimulate consumer demand. Um, the, uh, the data says uh, we have mostly e trikes and e um, uh, So, wala masyadong electric cars. So, probably there could be um, incentive packages or, uh, for, uh, for example, for EV purchases, uh, for charging points, for electricity consumption or a scrappage or a recycling of all vehicles. And um, and then lastly, we could 
uh, include TV sector in the areas for technical cooperation and trade missions, for example, as uh, they would provide um, opportunity to upgrade the knowledge and skills of the country's workforce and uh, also gives, uh, provides opportunity to explore partnership with local TV players and uh, foreign direct investments for the country. So next, I think that's the last slide. Thank you very much.